This is a continuation of the steam cylinder from the previous video. One of the cylinders was definitely not good. So I've made a new cylinder, it's all freshly machined, and now I have to use the existing parts and mark out the cylinder for drilling. Marking out the ends of the cylinder using the cylinder covers is pretty straightforward because the cylinder covers locate on the actual cylinder. But the steam chest doesn't, it wobbles all over the place. So using some Loctite 603, which is bearing retainer, simply stick the steam chest to the port face. Apply the Loctite 603, go and have a cup of tea, and when you come back, the steam chest is stuck firmly enough to the port face to allow you to use the existing holes in the steam chest to make indentations in the port face. What we're going to do is use the indentation as a centre so that when the tapping size drill is used, it's in exactly the right place. Once this is completed, a simple tap with a hammer, not too hard a tap, will separate the steam chest from the port face. Then you can simply scrape off the Loctite 603 with a ruler or something similar. With a suitable tapping size drill fitted, which is a 2mm drill, the first thing I'm going to do is set a depth stop. This will ensure that all the drilled holes are the same length. And this makes it very easy when you fit the studs because all the studs are then the same length. Saves a lot of messing about later. And here we have the cylinder's port face with six holes drilled in it which are all the same length and now I'm using a tap to tap the holes. But not at this speed. This is speeded up to stop anyone slipping into a coma whilst watching the video. The holes in this casting at this point on the port face are quite deep, so I'm using a taper tap first, and then I follow it straight away with the plug tap to get down to the bottom of the holes. You need to have a touch like a midwife when doing this, because it's very easy to break the tap. Here you see a temporary assembly, and everything fits very well indeed. I'm quite pleased with this. After marking the position of the studs on the cylinder casting, Using the cylinder covers in a similar way to the steam chest, but without any Loctite, it's time to drill the holes as can be seen in the video. I machined the mating surface of the exhaust port using my milling machine, and here I'm using a needle file to draw file the surface just to clean it up and give it a better finish. I'm using the gunmetal exhaust flange to mark out the casting for drilling. Again, I'm using the Loctite principle, just stick it to the casting. When the Loctite's gone off, make slight indentations in the casting, then transfer to the drilling machine and drill all the way down. Again, use the depth stop. And as before, this will make sure that all the studs protrude just the right amount. This centre hole needs to go all the way down to the exhaust port, which is right in the centre. The secret to getting a successful tapped hole in a cast iron cylinder is really to take your time. Make sure of course that you use the correct tapping size drill, but take your time and back off the tap periodically. On another thing, do not ever drop it on the floor with the tap wrench and the tap in the work, it will break off. That's it for now, here's the finished cylinder. And once again, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.